We got work to do. Welcome to Highway to Hell, a supernatural podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Kristen. And today we are talking about season four, episode 19. Forgot to confirm. It's 19. It's 19. (laughs) Jump the shark. I want to talk about what that means. (laughs) Okay. I actually have like a, a thing. Oh, great. Okay, great. Well, let me just read the IMDb description real quick first. For anyone who's forgotten what this episode is, the uh, top submitted IMDb description uh, was, okay, it says, Sam and Dean are contacted by one Adam Milligan, who claims to be John Winchester's son. The boys immediately suspect a demon trap and go to investigate. Adam turns out to be legitimately John's son, and Dean is furious that John kept Adam's existence from them, as well as sheltered Adam from the hunting life. This is really in-depth. It is. Uh, Meanwhile, other supernatural forces are at work, which lead to a tragic twist that neither Sam, Dean, or their new sibling could have guessed. Well, that new sibling might have guessed. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because it was was supernatural force, right? Um. But yeah, on point the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just weirdly specific. I mean, you know, those are, they don't have one, they don't have descriptions created by like an IMDb employee that are posted on there. They're just submitted by randoms and it's like, oh yeah, this one's the best one. Let's put it on the front page. Yeah, it's all Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. I wonder, have we looked at like the actual Supernatural box set uh, Mm, episode descriptions before? No. I haven't either. I just know the Netflix ones suck, but I don't know if they use the same ones. I think sometimes, like we've read the, like the WB or the CW releases too, because they have Uh those on Supernatural Wiki and sometimes those are a little too revealing. Yeah. Like, but I guess that makes sense, right? If you're buying the box set, it's like, well, you've, you've obviously probably seen this. Yeah, that's true. You're not (laughs) going to buy it if you've never seen it before. Yeah, just to remind you what this one's about. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so yeah, that's this one. Um, it was directed by Phil Segrecia, written by Andrew Dabb and Daniel Laughlin. Um, and then the actors we had were Jake Abel as Adam. And I thought it said Dee at first, but it actually says Deddy Pfeiffer as Kate. Oh, Yeah. I wonder if she goes by Dee Dee, though. I don't know. Maybe it's possible. Didn't Her mom didn't know how to spell it. <laughs> she, <laughs> she was really tired and accidentally left off an E. Yeah. When she was writing it down. After labor. Right. <laughs> I'm sure that happens. Probably. Um, so, yeah, what do you have? So... In uh, Nicholas Knight's official companion for season four, it says that the title refers to jumping the shark, which is an expression that originates from when the character Fonzie water skied over a shark on the sitcom Happy Days. It's used to describe when a show does something that's meant to reinvigorate it after the writers have run out of ideas, but instead it actually makes the show worse, signaling to fans that it's only going to go downhill from there. With a title like Jump the Shark, were the Supernatural producers admitting they might have gone too far with adding a third brother, or were they just joking around? And uh, Bob Singer, the executive producer, says, a little bit of both. Mm. We titled that with tongue-in-cheek because of Handled Badly. It's the kind of thing that would make people think we were jumping the shark. But there certainly was a plausible explanation for it, since what the boys thought was their half-brother was really a monster. It really turned out to be a good episode. Yeah, I I actually really liked it. Um, It was crazy out there. And so, yeah, I looked up that phrase, too, and read that. And I'm glad that you had that quote from, uh, from like... Bob Singer. Yes, because 
I couldn't figure out what they meant by it. I was like, shit, are they really like calling attention to the fact that this is like a Hail Mary for them? <laughs> I kind of love it, though. I kind of love that they're fucking around uh-huh. with the audience and with themselves. Like, And it reminds me of, um, uh, fuck, when um, in uh, – the Happy? ones, no, the <laughs> one we just watched. I can't remember the name where they uh, had the books. Monster at the end of this book, but they were uh-huh. talking about like the fans. Oh yes, and it was so like meta, and then it was like, uh, the writer was like, "Oh my god, y'all actually went through bugs and <laughs> <laughs> those terrible episodes." Right, They're, like calling themselves out for their own bad or you know misguided writing. There really are. But this one's interesting because they kind of already foresaw it as potentially being bad writing or bad, just a bad choice for them. Before it even came out. Yeah, but they were already like, let's just go with it. Yeah, we're going to do it anyway. (laughs) (laughs) But like later on, it does say that um, I think it's Kripke was like, okay, let's do this. But he needs to have died. Like he he can't be alive. If we're going to do this. He needs to be dead because we're not going to have this kid like riding in the backseat. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think that's maybe a good call. I was kind of hoping for more. I think, I mean, I hope that I do get some more Adam because I liked him. Um, yeah, I liked him too. He was, he was sweet. Yeah. Um, and it's good to know that that's how he actually would have been, you know, like, even though it was the ghoul, he was using like his personality and his memories and everything. So that's what he was like. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was a good kid. I know. I, I have mixed feelings about this episode because I really love the introduction of Adam. I love um, Dean's response to it mm-hmm. and being able to see that. Um, we got and some also really Sam's. interesting stuff between him and Sam. Oh, Yeah. Oh, it's just such a reversal from the first season. And I I just, I had never really honed in on that. It's like Sam's part in it all. Yeah. So I really loved it. Um, and, you know, I kind of have just mixed feelings because I felt like, oh, like we got introduced to Adam and he's dead. Mm-hmm. And it just feels like all for naught, you know? Right. And he actually was their half brother. Like that wasn't a lie. And now that he's dead, like... Okay, well, now they need to go to therapy for something else. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's a whole lot of fucked up in one go. They've lost their mom. They lost their dad. And now they thought they had met their brother. In one fell swoop. Yeah. They met their (laughs) brother and then he was and realized he was dead. It was just like, okay, this is not fair. (laughs) Yeah. Poor guys. God, it's just such a mind fuck. It is. Um, but I, I think that's my only like mm-hmm. issue with it. Um I get that. Other otherwise it's a it's a good episode, like a good plot twist. Um I did want to mention one thing is that uh a long time ago when Jen was still here, she predicted on season one one of her prophecies was that the the brothers would have a long lost brother. <gasps> really good at those yeah she really was she could just see it a mile away <laughs> that is so funny so when she left the show and we did uh that like short um episode on patreon of like me revealing all these wow. prophecies to her and stuff uh i did i did mention it to her that she was right on the money with that you're one. like by the way <laughs> they totally have a long lost brother but he's dead <laughs> yeah <laughs> shit man that's crazy i know all the way back in season one oh wow she's she's good (laughs) um well i don't really have anything else we didn't have any music in this episode uh i don't know if there was anything else you wanted to mention before we get started um just a reminder to uh do our survey uh, about season four as a whole um so we're gonna be doing the wrap up episode in about three, four episodes because we're almost there. We're almost done with the season. Um, so you can find that at bit.ly 
uh, forward slash highway S4 survey and highway spelled H-W-Y, just like the title of our podcast. So that's bit.ly forward slash highway S4 survey. You get to one talk about season four. Let us know if you like, you know, uh, Dean and Anna versus Sam and Ruby versus Sam and or Pamela and Sam's ass. Mm, is. My personal favorite ship. I mean, it's it's a hot ship. Mm-hmm. Just <laughs> hang up a picture of Sam's ass with Pamela smiling next to it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah, and more thoughts about season four. So <laughs> check it out. Okay, cool. Um, so we do get our then and now segments. And the then segment gives us an idea of kind of where this episode is going. <clears throat> We get a flashback of Sam and John arguing with each other. And John is telling Sam that he's the one who walked away and uh, and left them. And Sam says, you're the one who said, don't come back. Oof. Yeah. And then uh, another clip of John saying that, telling Sam that they're different from each other. And then Sam saying, we're not different. Not anymore. And then there are little clips in between of Sam and Dean just like fighting and killing monsters and doing their jobs together, basically. Yeah, looking cute. Yeah. Yeah, they're <laughs> kind of babies. There were some good like baby clips. Yeah. And then uh, Sam getting Ruby's demon blood, uh, sucking her blood. And then a clip of Castiel telling Dean that Sam is heading down a dangerous road. And... um then the last clip is Dean really upset with Sam and telling him that the whole thing with him has already gone too far and that if he didn't know him, he would want to hurt him. So that was intense. <clears throat> yep. Man. I know. So then we cut to now uh, and it's in a house at night and it's all quiet. And then suddenly a woman runs into the hallway screaming, and she runs down the hall and into her bedroom and locks herself in her bedroom. And something's trying to get in, but she pushes her armoire in front of the door and sits on the bed. And she's trying to calm down and lis like listen and see if anything is happening. And then we get a shot from underneath the bed looking out at her feet. Do not trust underneath the bed. No. Is there a space anywhere near you where something could be? The Under the bed is clearly the the worst most untrustworthy Wait. space <laughs> yes it is which to follow along in our, our our series of uh disney channel original movies that christine has never watched <laughs> do not look under the bed is is a great one as well good to know <laughs> i'll add it to the list of disney movies i've never seen and may never see and you will never see <laughs> <laughs> i'll note that for later <laughs> So predictably, she's grabbed from underneath the bed by two hands. We see these arms reach out and grab her. And as she's dragged under the bed, she grabs onto the bedside table and pulls it down. And a picture falls onto the floor. A picture of a smiling John. And he looks yeah. so happy. Yeah. So different from the John that we know him to be. Like a family um, man. Yeah. Fucking John. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> he makes me so angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I can see why, though. I mean, especially knowing all the shit that he's put Sam and Dean through. Like, <sighs> he's just an enigma. I don't no, know. Yeah. He's just got so many layers of bullshit. And he's taking Adam to baseball games. Like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah. We're, poor Dean. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus. Uh, so then we cut to a pretty like funny scene actually of uh the Impala. It looks like they're next to a lake. They're just parked there. And Sam's sitting on the hood of the Impala brushing his teeth. <laughs> yeah, this car life, man. Yeah. It sucks. It's rough. Uh, -huh. uh Dean is asleep in the car and he wakes up and he looks like death. He's just like, I thought they were going to say that he drank a lot the night before or something. I thought that too. I thought he was like hang hungover, Dean. He, but he seems super hungover. Yeah. It's just, it's just his, 
back is probably all messed up from sleeping <laughs> in such an awkward angle. Yeah. He's all fucked up from car sleeping. Yeah. So he's like in a mood. He's starving and he goes to eat a leftover sandwich, but it's tuna and it smells horrible. So that's not happening. Um, then a phone starts ringing in the car and Dean looks in the glove box and picks out John's old phone. He answers the phone and someone on the other end of the line asks for John and he says his name is Adam Milligan. Um, Dean breaks the news. I thought this was interesting because I think sometimes when they've answered his phone, they pretend to be him. Yeah. But because he, they think it's a job, you know? Yeah. But he just straight up says... Um, you know, I'm sorry to tell you this, but John died two years ago. He doesn't pretend to be John. And then he's like, who is this again? And uh, the guy on the other end of the phone kind of stutters and he says, I'm his son. <laughs> what? <Fuck. laughs> yeah. What the hell? Yeah. Qua? <laughs> uh, so then we cut to Wyndham, Minnesota. We've got the little... Uh, text at the bottom telling us where we are. Um, Sam and Dean pull up in the Impala outside of a diner and they get out and go back to the trunk and Dean opens it up and starts rummaging through it. And while he's doing that, Sam is telling Dean what he found out about Adam. He's a real person born September 29th, 1990 to Kate Milligan and there was no father listed on his birth certificate. Um, Dean thinks it's a trap. And he's just loading up on weapons. They walk into the diner and Dean's taking like all the precautions. He like moves a chair out of the way and he's just like setting up his, his trap for Adam. It's intense. It is. It's aggressive. It's super intense. Uh, and he's just convinced that Adam's possessed by a demon or something. And so he's not messing around. He takes the glass of water that the waitress brings over for him and he dumps it out in the plant behind him and he fills it up with holy water and puts it back on the table for Adam. Mm -hmm. And then he swaps out the silverware that's on the table for actual silver silverware. Smart. Yeah. Um, to test and, and see if he's that, a shapeshifter. It's weird that Sam is so like, dude, like we're just meeting this guy. Like, no, Sam should be on it. Sam should be like, Good plan, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no reason Get, go not with the to holy test. water. You're not hurting him. No, if he's if human. If he's human, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's 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 fine, Sam. Jeez, yeah. I think it's just that Dean is doing it so um, aggressively, <sighs> aggressively, and just like manically, almost. You know, like. So Sam's a little bit worried about Dean, perhaps. Um, yeah, but. and it kind of makes sense. Like, I was kind of wondering why he was so pissed off. But then he says, just like really briefly, like, um, you know, this thing thinks that he can use our dad as, as like bait or like a reason to come and get us. And he's like, that's the last mistake it's ever yeah. going to make in its pitiful life. He's like really pissed that they've used John. Yeah, and the <laughs> last time that's happened was like long distance call, right? With that. Um, yeah, yeah internet ghost or whatever the fuck it was yeah. you know that was like them up. using john yeah mm -hmm. so he doesn't like that <laughs> <laughs> no nope. uh so yeah dean's kind of like freaking out and sam looks over at him like kind of sadly like you poor thing um and he's like dean there's an entry in dad's journal from january 1990 where he says he's headed to minnesota to check out a case and that's about nine months before adam was born wasn't it uh, Makes sense. Yeah. Numbers being put together. Yeah, that's up mm -hmm. so far. And the next two pages of the journal are missing. They've been ripped out. Mm. Yeah. I was hoping that they would find those pages, but they didn't. I thought that was going to no. be in Kate's house or something. Oh, that would have been really interesting. Yeah. Like a they letter he wrote to her there. or something. Or, yeah. yeah. Anyway. So uh, Adam walks into the diner and they all introduce themselves. Um, Sam tells Adam that they knew John because they used to work together. And he tells Adam that he died on the job. And Adam was like, he was a mechanic. And Dean quickly says, a car fell on him. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. 
Yeah, just totally, totally <laughs> blank face. Yeah, but it's, it's so shitty though. because like if it's tr- if it's real, like if this kid is actually their half brother, he's being so mean. No, he's he just really, like I don't really give is. a fuck. I'm gonna tell you that your dad died because a car fell on. Him. <laughs> yeah, he suffered a painful death. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it chopped his head off. <laughs> like- uh, <laughs> but it's funny though because Kate and uh, uh, Adam just believe that john is a mechanic a traveling mechanic Mm -hmm. i mean i guess maybe he's just an absent father so he doesn't maybe he's one of those guys he says he doesn't know how to be a dad or whatever he's just gonna show up on his kid's birthday and take him to a baseball game and shit like that you know yeah maybe kate sent him a birthday card with a five dollar bill like that everclear song (laughs) yeah that was everclear right i don't know i'm not sure (laughs) <laughs> but but yeah, maybe Kate just like told Adam like, oh, like honey, he just he's so busy. He has a mechanic job and he just has to go around the country and just work it. And Adam's still like believing it at 19 years old or however old he is. And they like, didn't confirm whether or not Kate knew what he did. No, if she knew he was a hunter. Right. Hmm. I, no. I thought it would be fine if she did. You know, clearly she was able to keep the secret. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that they might say whether or not like she'd been in on it. <clears throat> I wonder, though, if he just wanted it to be a totally normal family, you know, just keep it. Yeah. Keep them all protected. Mm-hmm. I could see that. So um, the waitress comes over and she asks Adam, she's like, the usual Adam? And he's like, "Uh, yeah, thanks, Denise. So they know each other, uh, which says something. He's not just a nobody there. Right. Um, And then Adam drinks the holy water and nothing happens. But Dean still looks suspicious and he slowly draws his gun out from his jacket underneath the table and like points it at him. I was like, fuck, are you going to shoot this kid? I know. In, In front of everyone. Like, even if it was a demon. Yes. You're you know? it's in the middle of the day in this diner, dude. Yeah. Um, so then Adam says that he hasn't talked to John in a couple of years and he called him because he didn't know who else to call. He's the only family he has left. So then Adam tells them that his mom is missing. And then Dean continues being rude and he's like, so how come we've never heard of you if you're John's kid? And Adam says that they never really knew each other until a few years ago. Um, They just weren't close. He said his mom never talked about him, but she was a nurse. And there was one time that John came into the ER and was pretty torn up from a hunting accident. So that's what made me think that maybe she knew. Mm. Um, But I don't know. So Adam met John when he was 12 And he says that he had begged his mom to call John and she finally let him. And then when John found out he had a son, he dropped everything and drove all night to get there. Oh my goodness. And Dean just looks so jealous. Yeah, he looks fucking livid. Because you know that was one of those times where he was like, hey Dean, you watch after Sammy and stay in the motel. Yeah. And he was like, bye. Yeah. I, I was thinking, like, I wonder what the heck is going on in their lives when this is happening, when John is, like, leaving them mm-hmm. all alone to go to go with this kid. Yeah. That's crazy. So um, then Adam starts eating with the silver knife and fork, and nothing happens. And Dean's like, mm-hmm. damn it. And right before that, he had cocked the gun. And then he started eating with the knife and fork and he uncocked it and like put it away like really reluctantly. Fine. I won't shoot you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I guess. Not yet. Uh, So then Adam tells them that John would come by once a year or so and teach him poker and pool. That he bought him his first beer when he was 15. And he taught him how to drive. He says, dad had this beautiful 67 Impala. And that's when Dean fucking snaps. He's like, yeah. all right, this is crap. Who the hell are you? Like, you're a liar. <laughs> and I like Adam's reaction because he's like, excuse me? You know, like he fights back and he goes, who the hell are you to call me a liar? And Dean says, we are his sons. 
we are John's sons. Yeah, not you. Yeah. And Adam's like stunned. He's just sitting there and he's like, I have brothers. Oh, that's so sweet. I know. It's such a sweet response. I know. And Dean's yeah. like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I don't know if you're a hunter or what, but and then he's like, Adam's like, I've never been hunting in my life. He doesn't know what they're talking about. And Dean just loses patience and leaves. And he's like, come on, Sam. And as he gets up to leave, Adam says, I can prove it. So then the next shot is Dean and Sam looking at a picture, a big, like, blown up picture of Adam and John together when Adam's younger. And they're, like, smiling and happy. And Dean's like, he looks like he's maybe about to cry or, like, yell or he's just all over the place. Yeah. Emotionally. Yeah. It's so funny, though, because all the... All these pictures, I mean, Supernatural crew, you know, they're killing it with the CGI effects, but like. <laughs> I know, they're so clearly like poorly photoshopped. Like who did the Photoshop on these? <laughs> There's no excuse. It's like 2009 now. Photoshop had much, had improved. Which reminds me of the crazy fucking technology we have now that's really terrifying. John just showed me these videos that this guy made. It's called like control shift face or something like that and uh -huh. their movie scenes recreated with other actors faces on the actors oh so yeah and it looks real like totally real it looks it's there it's them so one of the scenes he showed me was um the scene from the shining where jack is writing and uh what's her face i can't remember her name right now she comes in mm -hmm. and bothers him and he kind of like lashes out at her and tells her to go the fuck away yeah and she's just like oh, okay and leaves the whole scene was remade with jim carrey as jack <laughs> what it's so they jim just like carry it's so put his fucking... face on it yes and it looks real it's his expressions and everything i was like this is to see this fucking weird it really weirded me out i'm gonna send them to you it was so bizarre <laughs> so people can steal your face now and put it on like a video it's not yeah. just a photoshop picture this is like a moving expressive face it was yeah. horrifying so <laughs> what it told me is that you can never trust what you see anymore guys just a no. heads up no, not at all. That's so funny because because uh, I just saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and there's a lot of um, – because it takes place in the 70s, like in the movie industry. And so they have Leo like clearly placed into these movies. <laughs> <laughs> but like – That's awesome. <laughs> I think Qu Quentin likes to have lots of fun with it mm -hmm. though. So you can kind of tell like this isn't really – like. This is clearly, yeah, Leo placed into this movie. Right. You it's know? not totally convincing, <laughs> but it's okay. No. But it's like for effect, yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. I want to see it. Um. So, yeah. <laughs> Photoshop has come a long way. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's really weird. So, um, yeah, they're like staring at this picture and um, Dean's like, they're at a baseball game and Dean's like, dad took you to a baseball game <laughs> and adam says yeah he took him to a baseball game for his birthday when he turned 14 and then sam has dad's journal and he reads the journal entry from september september 29th 2004 on his 14th birthday and it just reads minnesota so okay so if he was born in 1990 and it was his 14th birthday this was january 2004 yeah, and this is like about a year before uh, the Supernatural TV show starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wonder if like Sam had already been like, had already left or maybe he was about to, but he's having a lot of issues obviously with John at this point. Um, While John's taking Adam to baseball games. Yeah, he's like, well, oh. fuck you, Sam. You won't be a good son. I'm going to go hang out with my good son. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, That's a straight so up. Sad. 
the good son scenario. Oh, yeah. That was fucked up. Uh, and yeah, also, it just really tells you that he's really young still, too. So that was in 2004, and this is 2007 still, or eight? This is nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's like 19. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, he's still, still kind of a baby. <clears throat> so Dean's like really struggling right now to understand and deal with this. And so he hands him the picture back and he goes, he took you to a freaking baseball game. <laughs> you just <laughs> can't get over it. No. And then Sam asks about Adam's mom. Uh, she's apparently been missing for three days. And then Dean makes this face where he's just like forcing himself to care. And he's like, okay, so who saw her last? Uh, and then Adam says it was the neighbor, Mr. Abenanti. Weird name. We're going to go past that. Uh, he saw her come home Tuesday night, but she didn't show up at work on Wednesday morning. Dean sees a picture of Kate and John behind Adam on the mantle, and he's still just fucking struggling. Yeah. Every little thing he sees, he's just like, oh, God, fucking damn it. Like, I don't well, know. And, and, and now that means that, like, you know, um, John had been trying to avenge Mary's death this entire time. And, and he's probably just like, Oh, what did John forget about Mary? You know? And he's oh, like, yeah, he's just like doubting living everything. this life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's awful. Yeah. And Adam says that the cops searched the house and they didn't find anything. And this is really sad. He's like kind of trying not to cry um, because he's suddenly thinking about his mom and like talking about what's happening. Mm -hmm. so then they start looking through the house dean's looking around in her bedroom and he sees another picture of kate and john and adam and it looks like they're on a fishing trip like years ago and they're all like happy and it's a cute picture clearly photoshopped and adam walks in and says the cops uh said that there was no sign of a break-in and dean goes they don't have my eyes and adam's like you're a mechanic <laughs> like long pause like right and the Dean's better like, to see those spark plugs <laughs> <laughs> my pretty <laughs> yeah and dean's like yeah exactly right <laughs> mechanic yeah um so then adam asks dean what john was like because he didn't know him as well as dean and dean just says trust me you don't want to know Oof. So Sam walks over and kind of like beckons to Dean. He's obviously found something. So they walk off to talk alone. And Sam shows him a news clipping uh, that was that talks about um, 17 grave robberies that happened in the town in 1990. So that's mm -hmm. why John was there in the first place. Um, and then they look at the picture in the news clipping and John's in the fucking picture, <laughs> like lurking behind a tree. It was it was a little too much for me. It was a little <laughs> too much for me. Like uh -huh. he's all sneaky he's behind super, a tree, super lurky, <laughs> but not sneaky enough to not to like not get his photo taken. And right. Little, <laughs> and in the newspaper. a little bit too much. Yeah, I could have done without that photo. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I I can see why. Um, I believe I believe you, John. You're there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got it. Um, so apparently there were three more grave robberies that just happened. So they know that whatever John was hunting, he didn't kill it. Um, and then they think it stepped up its game and is going after fresh meat now if Kate's missing. And so is a local bartender named Joe Barton. Dean asks Adam if Kate knew Joe Barton. And he's like, I don't think so. Why? And while Dean's thinking, he's kind of staring at the ground. And then he sees claw marks under the bed, like the light the, that's shining through is just kind of hitting these <clears throat> claw marks. So they lift up the mattress and see a person-sized grate underneath the bed. Ugh. And this was such a good scene because, like, there are no words spoken. They just look at the grate. And Sam and Dean stick their hands out and immediately do rock, paper, scissors. And Dean yeah. loses with scissors. And he's like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. It's so great. <laughs> and he goes, and I want to say time. <laughs> every time, and I want to say that, like, 
uh, Dean lost with scissors in no exit the last time <laughs> they did that <laughs> before he went down the chute. <laughs> that's so funny and then later in the episode too he's like i should have done paper <laughs> yeah always go for the paper guy hilarious um so dean squishes himself into this chute into the vent and this is terrifying this is like one of my worst nightmares i never want to be in a space this tiny ever in my life yeah it just is really like it makes my palms sweaty and my heart race i can't do it so he squishes himself in, he's got a flashlight and a gun, and he's kind of like slowly making his way. And he turns the corner and draws his gun real fast and looks over and there's just like a pile of blood and bones and hair. It's so gross. It's disgusting. And he's like, Ugh. it has had to like, it, it had to be like stinky down there. Yeah, it had to smell too, for sure. Oh. Uh, so then we cut to the guys in their motel and Adam busts in and he's like, okay, who the hell are you guys? Uh, my house is a crime scene. My mom is probably dead and you guys tell me to call the cops, but you have to bail before they show. Um, mm -hmm. And he just demands to know who they are. And this is a really good scene. He's like begging them. He's like, and he's upset. Like he sees a gun sitting next to Dean and he's like, I know you're not mechanics. I just want to know what's going on. Um, so Sam says we're hunters and Dean tries to shut him up, but he's like, no, Adam deserves to know. Um, so then we cut to a little while later after they've explained everything. And Adam's like, so all the monsters that I grew up learning about that are in nightmares and <laughs> scary movies, they're all real. And Sam's like, yep. And we hunt them. And he's like, okay and just, dean gets mad he's like all right. what what do you mean okay and adam's like, like that's fine yeah and adam's like you're my brothers you're telling me the truth right and sam goes yeah and he's like then i believe you i really liked the the writing in this and like just kind of their dynamics going through everything because they're yeah. able to like they speak really quickly mm -hmm. um but there's a lot that gets across it's just like good conversation yeah a lot of like just trust mm -hmm. in Adam, mm -hmm. fake Adam, but you know, yeah. like it's, it's, it's nice. It's nice to see that. Agreed. Um, yeah. Did you have I something have... about the motel room? Yeah, I did. Um, so it says in this book that Phil Segrecia says, we lost our dear friend, Kim Manners a month or so before filming this episode. So the motel that the boys stay at is called the Kelsey Manor. KM is all over the place and you can actually see a picture of Kim in there. Oh, that's sweet. Which is really sweet. So just that. I like it. So they de they devoted the motel room to him. That's cool. I kind of was waiting for a Kim Manners reference in Monster at the end of this book because they had put them so many of themselves into that episode. I know. I'm surprised unless we missed it. I don't think so. I mean, I can go back and check, but we didn't catch it for sure when yeah. we went through that. But I thought that would be like, because they were all in it already, it would have been a good yeah. tribute. Yeah. Phil and mm -hmm. Carver. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Um, exactly. So, yeah, that's surprising. Um, so, let's see. Adam asks uh, what they think took his mom, but they don't know yet. Um, and then he's like, do you think she could still be alive? And they both just kind of like look down and get really quiet. And he's like, okay. You know, so they had to break the bad news that she's not alive. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Adam wants in on hunting whatever did this. And Dean's like, fuck no, basically. He tells Sam that they never knew about him. Uh, and that those pages were ripped out of John's journal because John was trying to protect Adam and he didn't want Adam to have their lives. Um, which is really interesting. Like this is why he's now pissed off. It's like he wants to protect him even though he wasn't even accepting that he was their brother at first. Yeah. Um, I guess now that he's convinced, he's like, no, we need to do this the way dad would have wanted us to, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And so then he gets all pissed off and like storms out of the motel and he's like, I'm going out. <laughs> and Adam's like, is he always like that? And Sam says, welcome to the family. <laughs> and then Sam pulls out a gun and he's like, I'm going to teach you some things. And Adam's like, uh, but Dean said. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam goes, I know what Dean said and hands him the gun. And he says, and I know what it's like to want revenge. So then we get this whole revenge theme through the whole yeah. episode. Lots of revenge. Talk of revenge. Yeah, it's weird that, I don't know, it, it is kind of like sudden for Sam to just go to this when Adam's not really asking for it. Mm -mm. Sam's kind of just handed, handing it over to him. And I don't know if it's because like he he himself was the revenge guy, right? So after Jessica died, he was like, I'm going to avenge Jessica's death. And uh, yeah the same way that John was about Mary. But um, it, it's just so, I don't know, kind of forced upon Adam. And Well, I mean, he says that he wants in on it, but the dude doesn't know how to use a gun. Like, he doesn't know any of this. So it's very much just, like, assuming that he is just going to get into all of that. And, and pick it up quick. Right. Because it's, it's going to be, like, about a day, you know? Like, if this yeah. was real adam and stuff like it it would still be about a day when they would like find out the monster and mm -hmm. be able to hunt him down so there's, there's not really like time to really train <laughs> no there isn't um so we cut to uh dean getting like a a tour of the mausoleum that was broken into um he's posing as agent nugent <laughs> like ted nugent still not a smooth cover-up no <laughs> it's so blatant yeah he uses it all the time <laughs> um and dean notices some liquid on the side of one of the graves that was opened and he asks what it is and uh he, the guy tells him that it's embalming fluid which is disgusting gross yeah and he says whoever took the corpses also opened them up but <laughs> So then Dean walks into a bar and the bartender says the first beer is free for cops and feds and that he's got a law and order vibe. <laughs> uh, Dean says that he's looking into Joe Barton's disappearance and he asks if she knew him and she says, a little. I'm his wife, Lisa. Ugh. She was really good. I liked her. It was just a small part, but she acted it really well. Yeah, I liked that answer too. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I knew him a little. Sweet. I know. Uh, she tells Dean that Joe had stayed late one night for inventory and he never came home. She was afraid the police had stopped looking. And then she's like, but now you're here. Oh. Uh, Joe is a deputy a long time ago. There's like a picture of him in his deputy uniform up on the bar. And uh, Dean asks if he worked the case of the grave robberies in 1990. And she's like, yeah, he did. He found the missing bodies and got an award for that. Um, mm. And so Dean kind of asks how he did it, how he cracked that case. And she's like, well, he used to just say it was good old fashioned police work. But after a few beers, Joe would admit that he had a little help from a specialist was all he would say. I love that because mm -hmm. uh, it's totally this guy, the kind of thing that would happen. Yeah, and, story, and they do that now. Obviously, this guy was one of the few like that we've seen in in the past where like Sam, Sam and Dean come across you know whatever case it might be, and they led on. Hey, there are monsters. This guy obviously knew yeah. exactly what was going on, mm -hmm. and, and but then cool. lived the rest he of his life. Like, yeah, yeah. He was one of those cool guys who was just in on it and kept his head down. And just went went the rest of his life with just knowing that fact, but just continuing. Yeah. So I love that. Me too. He was an ally. <laughs> yeah. Um, she says that they never found the guy who took the bodies, but Joe told her not to worry about it and that they, quote, took care of what done it, which is interesting. So then we cut to Sam and Adam, and they're just cleaning guns in the motel room. And Adam asks how John really died. Sam says a demon. And this is one of those times where they talk about revenge again. Adam's like, oh, did you get revenge? You hunted it down. 
and you got it. And Sam says mm-hmm. that Dean killed it. And Adam says, so it's over for you. And Sam goes, it's never over. And then the electricity cuts out. And they're like, what the hell? Uh, they hear clanking and something in the walls. And Sam grabs a shotgun and starts looking around. And he realizes that it's in the vents. He throws Adam out of the motel room and they start running down the motel hallway. Uh, Adam throws Sam his car keys. And as they're about to get in the car, Sam gets grabbed from underneath the car. Adam runs around and tries pulling him out from underneath. And then Dean pulls up in the Impala and sees what's happening. And he jumps out and grabs Sam's other arm. And they're able to pull him free. And then Dean grabs the shotgun and fires it underneath the car. Uh, they move the car and there's an open grate underneath going into the sewer. They just need to stop. Why? With these, stop where, with the grate. where are they? Yeah. <laughs> where are they where all these grates are and vents and whatever? I, know. <laughs> I guess that's how they build stuff in, what is it, Minnesota? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just a grate every five feet. Yeah. Um, there's blood next to the uh, sewer opening. So Dean says that he nicked it, but none of them saw it. Uh, they know that Adam's a target though. And they're like, okay, well, this is, you know, we know what it's going after. So they go back to Kate's house so Adam can get his stuff and they can get him out of town. And he, I just, thankfully this didn't work out this way, but they let him go upstairs by himself. And I was yeah. like, this is stupid. You know it's after him. You know it can get into the house. What are you doing? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's just, dumb. that's you know. But thankfully they didn't go there. Uh, Dean's plan is to get Adam out of town and to come back with Bobby to finish the job. But Sam wants to train Adam and get him ready because he's always going to be a target. Basically his argument is he's a Winchester. Like he's part of us. Uh, John pissed off way too many monsters um and creatures and there's always going to be something that's that will want him and there's going to come a day where he's just not ready and um so adam comes downstairs and hears them talking and he's like i i want to do it i'll do whatever it takes so he's in and i think that kind of it doesn't convince dean because he's still not happy about it but he's like okay fine so then Sam starts training Adam. Uh, and yeah, Dean's just like rolling his eyes the whole time. Um, Adam's a natural shooter. He's got good aim. And then they're looking at some of their monster books, like some of their reference books. And Adam goes, this is some job you got. And then Sam goes into this like lecture. He's like, this isn't a job. It's life. He's basically like, oh, you're you're in pre-med. You have all of your friends. Yeah, you can't have those. Um, Those connections are weaknesses and you'll just get people killed. So he's basically warning him and saying, if you're really going to do this and get into this life, then you have to cut those ties. And you drop everything. Yes. And the only thing you can really count on is family. And Dean's looking at him like, what like who who the fuck are you yes <laughs> and he's like sam can i talk to you for a minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah honey can we talk <laughs> i mean for a good reason like this yeah, is hard that for was, sam i was crazy i was like he's really taking this shit really to far. the next level yeah it's it's like mystery spot like hungry man sam here. Yeah. <laughs> just (laughs) you can't trust anybody but your family (laughs) but you'll fail (laughs) yeah basically (laughs) yeah it's really intense (sighs) so uh yeah dean pulls sam aside and he's like you sound just like our father (laughs) basically Mm -hmm. um he's like everything that you just said that's what dad said to you and you hated him for that that's when you left us and Sam's like, yeah, well, it turns out dad was right. And like, I understand him now. And Dean's shocked. He's like, again, like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and he's the way that Dean feels about it is like, it's it's too late for them, for him and Sam, but it's not too late for Adam. 
he could still have a real job and a normal life. And then Sam goes, what, are you jealous of the kid? And Dean goes, are you? And they both just kind of stare at each other for a second. Hmm. They both are. Yeah, they are. Sam, Sam's just not letting it on. No. <laughs> Dean is, but yeah, yeah, of course. He's not I admitting mean, it, but definitely. He got to have dad and a normal life, you know? Yeah. Like, so Dean says that Adam doesn't have to be cursed. And Sam, Sam goes, he's a Winchester. He's already cursed. What the fuck? Fuck you. <laughs> so, I don't know he's what's so going on with like, Sam. Uh, he's so fatalist and like, yeah. come on, Dean, we're, we're all cursed. You know, us Winchesters are just fucked. But it's interesting because it's like, it ends up being kind of true because Adam's dead already and it's because he is mm -hmm. John Winchester's son. I know. You know. It's weird thinking about all of this knowing that he's already dead. Because Sam was totally right. He was a target and he wasn't trained and he wasn't ready. And look what happened. And look what happened. That's really sad. Huck. I know. Yeah. So he's so yeah, he's like he's already cursed and Dean says no. And he's suddenly like determined to find whatever it is that's looking for Adam before it gets to him. And Sam's like, You already went looking, and he's like, I'm gonna go again. <clears throat> so Dean goes out and it's nighttime, and he goes back to that mausoleum with the broken graves, and he finds some stones in the wall that move aside to reveal a tunnel. Ugh, more tunnels. <clears throat> And, and yeah, Dean like looks into it and like shakes his head like, fuck. <laughs> There's no Sam to like battle yeah. over this one. <laughs> There's no getting out of this one. It's funny though, because like, I wonder if, well, we, we all know like Sam has never lost a rock, paper, scissors, but <laughs> like if Sam were the one picked, he wouldn't fit, you know, like. <laughs> That's so true. Like Just Dean's on principle alone, like Dean, you gotta go because you'll fit. Yeah, Dean's obviously <laughs> the best choice for this job. <laughs> Sam's just humoring him with the rock, paper, scissors and making him think there's a chance. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Dean squishes himself inside the tunnel and he comes out in like an underground mausoleum and it's riddled with bones and blood and it's clearly where this thing is living. And then Dean... Oh, kind of accidentally steps on the remains of Joe Barton. Really, gross. Gr really gross. Yeah. Uh, and then he says sloppy Joe. And I thought that was such a weird thing for the writers to put in there because it was like really disrespectful of the dead. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it was a a Dean kind of line. Like, yeah, totally. I guess disrespectful. the only reason it seemed weird to me is because he hasn't been jokey or Dean this entire episode. And then suddenly he does that about this guy who he just learned about by talking yeah. to his wife and he was like That's friends true. with their dad and like helped him on this case. I just felt like it was That's true. He kind of did have that connection with yeah. the wife and everything. So yeah, it's kind of, it's pretty fucked up. But I guess if he said it about someone else attitude. it would have made more sense to me. But I was like, dude, I kinda like this guy. Like you're you don't know. Yeah, his entire attitude, though, like, especially in the beginning when he's like, okay, so, like, tell me about your mom, I guess. She's missing or whatever. <laughs> That's true. He's been pretty cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. So then Dean hears some scraping, and he looks up and something is moving the stones back into place at the end of the tunnel. Shit. Weird, Yeah. So he takes his gun and he shoots at the end of the tunnel, like repeatedly. And then this dirt collapses and it totally closes it up. And we get a son of a bitch. Yeah. And we actually get two right after the other because then he tries his cell phone. Yeah. He tries for <laughs> cell phone reception and he's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. So here they are cut together. Oh, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. <laughs> the little beeping sound yeah <laughs> that's Son too of bad a bitch. i mean you did it to yourself dean what the fuck are you doing shooting inside that tunnel <laughs> yeah that was i mean i i get it but was it smart mm, not really <laughs> so then we cut to sam and adam and they're battening down the hatches at the house they close off all the entrances except the grate in the bedroom 
And Sam's like, okay, so this is the only way it can get into the house. You know, we're, we're just going to watch it. And then they hear a door open downstairs. And Adam looks at Sam and he's like, you were saying? <laughs> and then we hear Kate yelling for Adam. <gasps> no. Ugh. So he goes running downstairs and Sam goes running after him, telling him to wait. And then we see Kate and she looks kind of bloody and hurt and she's in her scrubs and Adam runs over and hugs her. But Sam's got his gun out and he tells Adam to get away from her because she's not his mother. Then we cut to Dean and he's looking around and he sees this casket that looks kind of new and he mm -hmm. opens it up and finds Kate's dead body inside and she's like opened up around her stomach. It's like entrails Yeah, like shit. her insides are coming out. Ooh. Then we cut back to Sam and he's trying to explain to Adam that that's not his mom. But Adam instinctively just like grabs the gun from Sam and he seems really freaked out and he's going back and forth between pointing the gun at Sam and then at his mom. And Sam's telling Adam to shoot her because she's not human. And then Adam pauses and he winks and he says, I know, and smacks Sam in the face with the butt of the shotgun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And then Shit. Adam and his mom smile at each other and the scene cuts. They know each other. Fuck. Fuck. Damn it. Adam. <laughs> Not Adam. Mm -mm. Boo. I was so sad. I know. I wanted it to be Adam. But I, I was in the suspicious. I mean, I was still suspicious of it, you know, but still. Yeah. Adam in the backseat. I, I would be fine with that. So uh, Dean finds another casket and he opens it and sees Adam's dead body also opened up. So then he's like, fuck. And he's like frantically trying to find a way out and sees a stained glass window in the ceiling with light shining through. Then we cut back to the house and Sam is spread Eagle tied to a table and Kate is standing there humming. And he says, no wonder none of the tests worked. You're ghouls. So this is cool. Mm. We haven't seen a ghoul before. No, we haven't. Um, I was like, ew. <laughs> also, ew. Yeah, gross. And I looked it up, and uh, it look it looks. I mean, it's kind of like the same mythology that Supernatural uses is the mythology of of ghouls. It's just it actually comes from um, Arabic, the word ghoul, and like it's um, an Arabic. Uh, um mythology that's really interesting and the really interesting th thing that i read was um a female ghoul is gula hmm. i've never <laughs> so, like, heard that before i've never heard that before either They're ghouls and ghoulas ghoul and gula huh. and it's actually i'm sorry pre-islamic arabian religion oh, so it's like ancient really old yeah um, but other than that, I think the only like ghoul I've ever seen is like in Harry Potter. Yeah, exactly. Books, That's all least. I know. That's what I was thinking. The ghoul in the attic. The ghoul in the attic. And he, is he like, I don't know. No. He doesn't like feed off of gravestones or anything, but he's just really gross, right? Described as gross yeah. or something. Yeah. He's just nasty. And he does. Any no. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more like Casper style ghoul. <laughs> yeah. Just kind something. of haunting the attic. Yeah. Nothing <laughs> nothing close to like the actual mythology. Right. Um so then ooh, this little part where Kate goes by Sam and she leans down and she's smelling him and then she nibbles on his ear a little bit. Did you see that? <laughs> no. <laughs> she bit his ear. Ew. Yeah, like That's it would be gross. hot if it were hot, but it's <laughs> Gross. She's like eating his ear. Yeah, she's like, mmm, <laughs> like tasty. Oh, <laughs> so disgusting. <laughs> I so, did not know that. Yeah, yeah, that was something. Um, so she's like, yeah, fresh meat is so much better than what we're used to. And then we get some kind of exposition about ghouls from Sam. It was nice. Uh, he yeah, says, Sam. yeah, he's like, well, that's what threw him off because ghouls don't usually go for fresh meat, just dead bodies. And that they take the form of whoever they last ate. And they also take their thoughts and memories. So I was thinking, 
that must be why they're keeping Kate and Adam's bodies there so that they can just have them available to eat when they want to be them. And then if they actually need to feed, they can just eat somebody else like Joe or whoever in a grave and then yeah, take another true. bite out of Kate and their Kate again. Yeah. So I, I wonder if they had like done uh, uh, Joe at all or if there like was been just him. like, yeah, Ooh, yeah I wonder. for a little bit perhaps, but Oof. maybe to get Kate and Adam in to lure them in, you know? if they knew him and everything but who knows yeah i wonder (laughs) gross so then kate oh this was really hard for me to watch i actually like screamed a few times (laughs) oh and she's sucking his blood wow when they're slicing him oh yeah i was like "Ah!" so she like slices his arm and drinks some of his blood and she goes his blood tastes different so interesting Uh uh-huh um and then they tell sam that they're the kids of the ghoul that john killed so he did kill the ghoul and that was their father so this was kind of interesting because it's a generational fight (laughs) yeah no it is and they're going after the kids Uh and everything the kids are going after the kids Mm mm-hmm um so then we cut back to dean and he pulls a fucking spidey move he tears the like <laughs> um bar off the side of the casket that you use to like hold it up and um he breaks out the glass the stained glass window and then like mm-hmm. puts the bar through the window onto the other side and uses it to like hoist himself up and like do a fun little swift Damn. jump up into the window i know check you out <laughs> you think he works out <laughs> Uh, then we cut back to the ghouls and they're torturing Sam oh, and they're just like slicing his arms up and down. And it was just really, it was hard for me to watch. Yeah. And they're telling him about how they had to grow up on their own without their dad. And the Adam ghoul tells Sam that they're going to feed on him nice and slow like they did with Adam. And oh. then the Kate ghoul says, and by the way, he really was your brother. I thought you should know. And that he was still alive when they took their first bites. And he was a screamer. Ugh. It's what so a bunch s- of assholes. Assholes. Yeah, so sad. It's super sad. Ugh. Poor Adam. And this is like really upsetting Sam. Like it shows his fist and he's just like tightening his fist. He's so pissed. Um, And then they slice his arm like like vertically like down your arm like really trying to bleed him out it's interesting that like sam we've seen him now fight against demons and he's awesome at it and there's some there's some like reasoning behind that because he's like taking in demon blood like the whole thing is that he can control demons Mm -hmm. right but we do know that he has some sort of uh telekinetic powers but that's not that that's he's not building on that at all yeah you know yeah his mind powers yeah because mm-hmm. I, I i wish he could have been just like i'll show you and then have like a luke skywalker moment but yeah he, yeah he's totally uh helpless at this point unfortunately mm-hmm. it's unusual mm-hmm. um so they slice Sam's arms and they have bowls underneath him that are catching his blood. And suddenly Dean busts in and shoots at him. And Sam yells at him that they're ghouls, which is good. So then he switches guns and blows Kate Ghoul's head off. And then he's like, which means headshot. It's like, okay, well, good to know. That's how you kill a ghoul, right. I guess. Yeah. Um, Again, thank and you it's for a the nice way to, No, it's a nice way to do the exposition, too. Because it's like, oh, yeah. Got it. <laughs> so then he goes to free Sam, but he's grabbed behind from Adam. And then they fight like hell. This was a really rough fight. They're hitting hard. They're, like, hitting each other with objects. Dean's, like, laying into him. And then Dean gets the upper hand. It's like he grabbed a like a lamp stand or something. I couldn't tell what it was. Mm -hmm. And he starts hitting him in the head with it. 
And this whole time, Sam's bleeding out pretty quickly. He's just like, not looking good. No. And Dean is beating his head in repeatedly until he's satisfied that the school is dead. He's like really fucking into it. Basically be his head off. Yeah. <laughs> like until it came off. It was yeah. really like it was another like Dean slicing off that vampire's heads moment. Yeah. It was yeah. Like, really fucking intense. Uh-huh. So then Sam yells for Dean and he runs over and unties him. And this was kind of sweet. He like really kind of gently removes like the rope that was tying him up and gets him some towels and like wraps them around his arms and puts pressure on it. And Sam says, thank you. And Dean goes, that's what family's for, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so then we cut to Sam and Dean uh, in the woods and they have wrapped up Adam's body and they're giving him a hunter's funeral. Uh Sam's like, do you think we should do this? Like, really? Dean says that Adam was their brother and he died like a hunter. So he deserves to go out like one. And Sam's like, maybe we can call in a favor to Cass and bring him back. Which is an interesting thought. Yeah, I was really surprised that he said that. One, because that's a pretty big deal for them. We already know that they're like fucking around with fate and, uh, and life and death and everything because got dragged out of hell but um but like for sam to even offer that Mm -hmm. and i think sam really had a connection with adam and he was sad to not know him you know and not have that but also like does does sam really think that kes can do that i don't know that's a pretty big ask yeah that's that hasn't happened before i mean Mm -mm. Dean's situation was a little bit different just because he was in in hell Mm -hmm. and everything and but where's Adam you know like right like how would how would he be able to bring him back I don't don't know know. maybe he's thinking he's like in heaven and so it's like an easy ask it's just like yeah just put one in yeah put one in for the team or something Mm mm-hmm so he suggests that and Dean says, no, he's in a better place, which was a weird thing for him to say, because haven't they said in that, like in some of the recent episodes in the past, like where he saw Tessa again, they had that whole conversation about it, about going to a better place. And she's like, that's, well, we I don't mean, know. do you really believe that? And he yeah. says, no, like, we know that he doesn't believe that, but he's saying it. Right. There's not really proof that he's in a better place or anything like that. Yeah, it's like he's still just saying it because that's what you say. Yeah. Um, but he's fine. He's fine with not knowing mm-hmm. like exactly where he's at, just that he's at peace or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I guess maybe now that I think about it, the point of that conversation with Tessa was like, no, you don't know. But these are the things we tell ourselves to, like, make it okay. So we're just going to keep doing that. Yeah. So then Dean douses Adam's body with lighter fluid and sets it on fire. And as they watch Adam's body burn, Dean says that he finally gets why Sam and John butted heads so much. They were practically the same person. Dean says that he worshipped John and he tried to be him. He's like, I, I listen to the same music. I did everything but he sees now that sam is more like john than he ever will be and then there's kind of a long awkward pause and sam's like i'll take that as a compliment and dean says you take it any way you want and then the episode ends i feel like it's an insult it's totally an insult that was such a weird it was weird it's a weird way to end it like i it's totally an insult because but it's and i think is it showing like how sam has changed so much that he now sees it as maybe a compliment because he thinks it's the dad had been right about some of that shit and stuff like that and he's like harder now you know i don't yeah although i feel like sam said that almost kind of like, like sarcastically yeah i couldn't tell I feel- I, I don't tell, know. Which is why it felt weird. I was like, guys, I don't know what you're talking about right now. 
I feel like he felt the way I did, where it was just like, Jesus, another insult, Dean. Like, yeah. Okay, well, I'll just, I guess I'll just take that as a compliment. All right, thanks, Dick. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But no, I thought that was really interesting. I don't. And also just the fact that, like, he sees him like John. I don't, I don't know about that. Well, I think he was a lot like him in this episode. I actually kind of see it because, and maybe it's just because I had this, I've experienced this. In, in me being like my mother uh when i was in high school we fought a lot which is weird to think about now because we're so close and never fight mm. but we b butted heads like that a lot in that same kind of period of time you know where i was a teenager and growing up and figuring out life and we are practically the same person like she just met uh one of my high school friends they got connected uh, because he wanted a tree and she has some little baby cypress trees. And so she said that she would give him one. And so he went over there with his girlfriend and um, they visited with my parents for like three hours. My, my friend is really cool. He's a very interesting person. So they just had great conversation. Mm -hmm. And when they stopped hanging out they both texted me and they were like i just hung out with so and so for three hours and it was so great <laughs> um but my friend from high school was like i can't get over how much you're like your mom y'all are so alike so you even use profanity the same <laughs> <laughs> we're just like the same person and it's um so i get that like i think you kind of like grow into them sometimes yeah. going to your parent that is so funny you say that just because it's it's kind of exactly the same with my mom like really where we just like butted heads like real bad in like around 18 to up until the point where like i moved out mm. and then and then i think i told you right like uh recently at lunch where it's like now i've turned into my mom where i'm like if you don't clean this up i'm <laughs> I'm throwing everything away. Yeah. That's exactly my mom. Yes. And she would. She would throw shit away if you didn't clean it up. And so I've turned into that person, you know? And so it's like, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And I think he really kind of showed it in this episode in those, like, that, like, lecture that he gave Adam and just his attitude about hunting lately, you know, as he's gotten harder and more serious about it, that's more John-like. Yeah. So maybe he's just kind of like finally growing into that and realizing he's he's becoming his dad. <laughs> yeah. But and Dean's gone on such a journey this season, especially since he like came out of hell. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I think he's just been feeling he's been feeling like he just wants to quit and just live the normal life and so mm -hmm. Of course, he's going to just see Sam going in the opposite, opposite direction and just be like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. And just feel like he's making the wrong choices and everything, which is always it's just so interesting because Sam, I don't think ever judges Dean for his behavior and for his actions and the way he thinks. He always just accepts Dean the way he is and and just deals with it or tries to change his mind if he feels like he's making a wrong de wrong decision. Mm hmm. But Dean's always, like, dogmatic in everything he does, mm -hmm. you know? Like, he's always saying, no, Sam, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. So, I don't know. I just, I kind of feel for Sam a little bit with with this and with him kind of maybe feeling insulted. I guess we're not sure, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I still, I kind of feel for Sam, too, but I still kind of weirdly don't trust him right now but yeah i mean it, it was like a really like aggressive way to react like you can't trust anybody and only family and and he's got this, this demon blood thing going on and i feel like it's something that he doesn't even realize like how it's affecting him well and now we know it's affecting him so much that even the taste of his blood is different mm-hmm so I kind of feel like there's something, like I feel for Sam, 
because he's, you know, going through all this shit. But, uh, like, there's something under the surface that's not Sam. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Um, it was a, it was a good episode. Um, wasn't one of my absolute faves, but it was really interesting. Um, did you have any thoughts on ranking? I don't. Um, I am kind of all over the map on it, but I was wondering if you had a suggestion. I mean, I don't know how it kind of ranks on our important scale because we find out they've got a brother. But it doesn't like change anything no. in their universe, you know, like with They're all the other still shit that's happening. To continue, it's just with this like little bit of knowledge that they used to have a brother. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. We've got Are You There God? It's me, Dean Winchester at twenty eight. The Magnificent Seven home is thirty. I guess there yeah. there wasn't a whole lot of uh like lasting impact here. It was just interesting. No, yeah, I know. Um It's it's funny because it's kind of similar to home in that they're learning more about their family and their family life. Yeah. Um I thought home did a better job. And also just like looking at the even like looking at those episodes underneath it, Devil's Trap and Very Supernatural Christmas, mm -hmm. I feel like those were better too. Were more meaningful. Um, but I can see it around around underneath there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I, I can see I that do, too. Yeah, I do think it's better than Sin City. Um, it's a terrible life and more, it's terrible more life. impactful we just than had it's that. a terrible life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that, actually. I think I'd be good with it as the new 33 Yeah. instead of Sin City. I think that's a perfect spot for it. Okay. Okay. So Jump the Shark is going in as the new number 33. And this one's going in the trunk. <laughs> well, I'm just so excited for the next three episodes. I mean, it's going to be a wild ride until we get to the end. I'm excited. Um, fuck, man. We're almost done with season four. It's been great. It it's really been so has. good. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. You were right. Lived up to the hype. <laughs> it's been good. Yeah. It's so good. Um, and just so excited to get to season five. What's the what's our next episode called? It's called The Rapture. Ooh. That sounds the interesting. <laughs> Do you remember when everybody started talking about the rapture? It had kind of like a pop culture moment. Did it? Yeah. No, I don't. What there what were was people it in reference like to? fucking with people, like going outside and like laying whole sets of clothes out. So it seemed like everybody had been taken in the rapture. <laughs> I don't remember this at all. Like memes and stuff. I don't remember when that was. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my God. Because I think, oh, maybe it had come from, I think, you know, one of those, like, prophecies that pops up every now and then that someone has made. And it's like, oh, we're coming up on the time where this is supposed to happen. And then it didn't happen. <laughs> Which happens, like, every five years or something. Right. So funny. Uh, so, yeah, cool. Looking forward to that. Um, well, then, I guess until next time, we'll see you guys on the highway to hell. Bye. Bye.